simple way to change the feel of a space is to add texture and introduce new materials and colors. This living room needed just that. So let's get started. I'm going to use white oak plywood for the panels. White oak is a common wood that is used in the client's home, so I wanted to tie in that nice white oak wood grain. The final dimensions for the panels will be 5 foot 6 inches by 3 foot wide, so I would need one full 4x8 sheet per panel. They can get pretty heavy, so having some kind of panel carrier will come in handy. I moved all the sheets into the dining room. Yes, my dining room. I have to work with what I got, right? But being able to work in AC was amazing. Anyways, the client wanted the walls to be black with some white oak accents which tied in with the kitchen cabinets. I went with Rubio Mono Coat for the stain and I used their intense black pre-color treatment to give the panels a really nice black color. It's super easy to apply and it took a few hours for it to fully dry. Once the stain was dry, I finished the panels with Rubio Mono Coat Oil plus C2 in their charcoal finish. I let the product sit for about 5-10 to 10 minutes before buffing it off with my buffer. I'm using a buffer because it's going to remove a lot of the material quicker compared to using a rag or a towel. The finish needs to be removed from the surface before 15 minutes. That's the working time. If you don't remove all of it, it does get a little bit sticky and gummy and it won't cure properly. So having a bigger pad will allow me to apply the finish over the entire panel and then quickly remove it uh, before that 15 minute period. The cure time for the finish takes about five days with the accelerator. So I allowed each panel to cure for about five days and then I took them outside to cut them into the rough final sizes. I left a little bit of wiggle room in each panel just in case I needed to modify the panels if the walls at the install location is not perfectly straight. And spoiler alert, they weren't straight at all. For this task, the track saw was the way to go. With the panels cut, I can then start the prep work at the client's place. I first located the placement for my floating shelf. I'm using these awesome brackets from Shepherd Brackets. They're similar to the ones that I use in my living room remodel, which you could check it out here if you haven't seen it, except these are made for hollow shelves. I made sure to secure the brackets into the stud, and just to make sure it's super secured, I used four screws at each location. Screws are cheap, but callbacks are a pain. Next, I can then remove the baseboard and part of the trim from the window since it's going to be in the way of the new panels. These panels will be directly applied onto the wall using construction adhesive, so anything that sticks out of the wall needs to go. I'll then paint the exposed areas behind the panels. Since I'm using a quarter inch spacer, doing this now will save me a bunch of time later during touch up. I painted a line that was an inch and a half thick, which should give me plenty of wiggle room if I need to adjust the panels. The bottom row of panels needed to be modified with holes for the existing outlet and for the shelf bracket. So I took my measurements and used a jigsaw to cut them out on site. Nerve wracking, yes. I had to go back and forth many times before actually making the cut. If I messed this up, this would have been a really big cost for me. It would cost me a pretty penny and a lot of time to redo one entire panel. So double checking, triple checking, and checking a four time was beneficial here. If you guys never met Andy, he's been helping me in the shop and I also had him come to this install, which helped tremendously. We test fitted the panels just to make sure everything was perfect before applying the construction adhesive. I used a quarter inch spacer, as I mentioned before, between each panel just to give it a slight reveal and break the solid wall feel. I'm also using Loctite PL construction adhesive to attach the panels onto the wall. This glue is much stronger than the typical liquid nails, so long as you allow it to cure properly. 
I ran a quarter inch bead behind each panel, about 12 inches on center and around the entire edge. I also dabbled a few areas on the wall just for safe measure. For each panel, I also tacked in a few nails on the top into the wall stud so that the panels would stay in place as the adhesive dries. Once I got the left side started, it was fairly simple to install the remaining panels. With the panels installed, I can handle the small details like replacing the white outlets for black ones and reinstalling the TV and soundbar. Because the panel added an extra 3 quarter inch to the wall, I needed to add an outlet extension by code. This prevents any combustible materials from touching the hot ends and it allowed for the outlet to sit on top of the panel rather than behind. The final piece was to create the shelf. For this, I joined two pieces of white oak together to make a 12 inch wide board. I mitered the edges to create a miter box which will hide the end grain and edge grain, making it look like a solid piece of white oak. I glued the piece together and used a few pieces of scrap wood inside it to help with the glue up. The shelf is 8 foot long so the scrap pieces helped support the top and allowed me to clamp the piece together without having to create a 45 degree clamping jig. Once the shelf was dried, I took it inside, sanded it down, and added a few coats of polycrylic to match the other white oak accents that was in the house. With that done, this project is complete. The goal was to create something that had a solid look, and since the ceiling heights were incredibly high, balance out the large living room volume while at the same time still keep the space airy. There was a lot of collaboration during this process with the client from choosing the right black, the right sheen, and looking at various design options for the space. For me, it's the team effort that makes for a successful project. Until next time guys, this has been Bao Design Craft Workshop. See ya.